Let's start out with the abdominal wall of the bovine here. We see here the cutaneous trunk eye muscle. Notice the cutaneous trunk eye muscle doesn't come all the way up to the paralumbar fossa in the bovine. So with a paralumbar incision, you're not going to encounter that. Then we see our external abdominal oblique muscle here with the fibers going caudoventrally. It has been cut away to expose now the internal abdominal oblique whose muscles go cranioventrally. This portion that attaches along the lumbar area has been transected. But notice the paralumbar fossa. It's going to be defined by that portion of the internal abdominal oblique that attaches to the tubercoxy, the transverse processes of the lumbar nerves, and then the caudal rib. Okay, so there's our paralumbar fossa. We then see the transverse abdominus muscle here. Okay, we can also see here some of our spinal nerve branches. We've got our ventral branch of the spinal nerve which is going to give off a medial branch which continues along the transverse abdominus. This will innervate our transverse abdominus and our internal abdominal oblique as well as our peritoneum. And then a lateral branch which is going to come and do our ventral flank. And this will innervate our internal and external abdominal obliques as well as the skin of the ventral flank. And then up here, we can see some branches that are the ventral branch of the dorsal branch. They're going to have both a dorsal branch to do cutaneous up here, as well as a ventral branch, which will do cutaneous in the dorsal flank. And then remember, the medial branch of the dorsal branch just does these epaxial muscles for motor innervation. Okay, let's move caudally here. We see here the middle gluteal muscle. Remember, in the bovine, there is no superficial gluteal muscle. Our biceps femoris has kind of incorporated that in development, and so sometimes this is referred to as the gluteal biceps. Okay, so we have the gluteal biceps or the biceps femoris muscle, the middle gluteal. And we see there's a portion of the medial gluteal here that's kind of separate. This is the accessory head of the middle gluteal. And then we have the deep gluteal deep to that. These muscles are all going to act in abduction of the limb. Okay. But we're also going to get some extension by the middle gluteal. Here we see the sciatic nerve. And then where the Biceps femoris was attaching here up on the sacrosciatic ligament. Okay. Here a little more ventrally, we see this triangular muscle here, which is the tensor fascia lata. The fascia lata now has been removed from here to better expose the quadriceps femoris muscle. Here we're seeing the vastus lateralis. The rest of these muscles have not been dissected out. And moving more caudally, here's still another portion of the biceps femoris. And then we have our semi-tendinosis and our semi-membranosis. Notice these guys are going to attach on the tuber ischii, whereas in the horse we're going to see both the biceps femoris and the semi-tendinosis coming all the way up to attach to the sacrosciatic ligament. We come down here along the distal margin of our biceps femoris. We see the common peroneal nerve coming out, which is going to be a branch of the sciatic. And that's going to innervate these craniolateral muscles, which are going to flex the hock and extend the digits.